JJ Ray Jewelry Designs. I am right up here. Move back. I um am a jeweler by trade and a beater by hobby. I um design, fabricate, and set find um jewelry and, and gemstones and I started out as a beater many years ago I went to wire wrapping and then I finally decided that I wanted to become a jeweler I went to school and um, I now have my own uh, studio which encompasses all of my um, hobbies and trades, the wire wrapping, beading, and um, fine jewelry, making fine jewelry. I'm a metalsmith and a uh, gemstone setter. So today I wanted to talk to the beading community about gemstones. I have watched a lot of your videos and I've enjoyed a lot um, of uh, unboxings and hauls and tutorials and uh, thank you for, for all of that. I've uh, gleaned some, some great new skills and information from those. And so today I wanted to kind of pay it forward and show you what I have here are some um, phenomenon gemstones. And I thought I would start with these because they are my favorite and they're a lot of people's favorite uh, category of gemstones. And I want to start out by um, apologizing for the state that my nails and my hands are in. I work with a lot of metal metal and chemicals during the day and I can't wear um, beautiful nails or polish my nails or do any of that because it, <laughs> it's just not practical in the, in the business I'm in. So um, I just wanna apologize ahead of time for that. I want to start out with uh, the Moonstone. The Moonstone is going to be in a lot of these categories of phenomena and gemstones. It is uh, the subject of most of, it ha takes on most of the characteristics um, or the, the most array of characteristics in this category of phenomena and gemstones. The Moonstone has, um, if you get a rainbow moonstone, it has this beautiful blue and rainbow color in it. The background is blue. You can see a rainbow over the top of that. I'm trying to turn it in a light so that you can see all of it, all of its glory. Now the moonstone has something that's called agilorescence. The agilorescence refers to those beautiful colors that look like they're glowing from within. Um, I don't know if you can see on that corner, it's a beautiful rainbow. Not coming through with the lighting I have now. Maybe a little bit there. See that? Yeah. Um, so when you get a very good moonstone. You'll see that beautiful blue glow. You'll see a rainbow in there somewhere, should be. And what's happening is the light is hitting off of the layers in that stone and hitting off of the um, inclusions, the impurities within that stone. And it's refracting that light back at you. So it looks, it gives you the, the feeling that the stone is just glowing from within. When you purchase a moonstone, be sure that you um, are purchasing a 
rainbow moonstone or you won't get that blue you won't get the rainbow um, it'll just be a regular white kind of um let me see if this is one like a oh, no that's a pretty one it'll just be a kind of a white foggy stone with no color in it whatsoever i'm sorry all of mine are beautiful <laughs> darn just when you want to show a bad one um so that's called agilorescence that kind of optical illusion that the stone has this glow coming from from within look at you can see the uh rainbow right here in that corner um it has a sheen and the, and that is um that effect especially uh with the rainbow moonstone it's agilar essence as a, as a sheen um and then we have and and this is another one that will be in a couple of different categories or subcategories of the um, phenomenon gemstones. This is the opal, and it has uh, that sheen, that glow from within, and it's called the opalescence. So you have the agilorescence of the moonstone, and you have the opalescence of an opal. Um, Aventure Essence is another um, stone that has a subcategory, and this one has a Schiller or and sheen. The Schiller is Well, the best way I can describe a Schiller is by showing you the gold stone, which is a man-made stone, but it has a beautiful Schiller. You see all that glittering, that beautiful glitter? That's, that's a Schiller. The sheen is the glow from within the stone. Sunstone is an, um, has a vegetarescence. It has that Schiller or the sheen the glow from within and all that glitter. I'm trying to make it glitter for you. It's a beautiful sunstone that I have here. There, maybe you can see some of it. But with the um, gold stone, the man-made stone, you can see it even more prominently under my studio lights. Um, Andesine and Labradorite also can have that aventuresis, that sheen obsidian sheen. I mean, I'm sorry, it wasn't obsidian sheen, aventurescent, or andesine is not obsidian. It's a, um, sorry, that was my soda. Um, andesine labradorite is a crystal. Uh, unlike the um, labradorite as a stone that I have right here. Now, crystal barrel cat's eye is a very famous cat's eye. I don't happen to have any here, but that has a chatoyancy. That's where those fibers meet and in the stone, and you can see they split and then they come together, and it looks like a cat blinking there their eye. You can see that sometimes it can occur in a quartz, um, appetite, uh, barrel, the moonstone again can have um, a show toyancy. And did I say tourmaline or appetite? I don't remember um, if, I, if I've said those. Now a simple chatoyancy would be the tiger's eye and you can see by turning it and this is how you would do a crystal bear cast eye also so you turn it from one side to the other let me try it this way the lines those fibers in the stone seem to connect as one and then when you turn it the other way they open and it'll wink again and open 
wink and open. If you can see that happening, that is a simple chatoyan seat. And we know uh, tiger's eye to be a very chatoyan gemstone. It's a beautiful tiger's eye, isn't it? Um, now, that type of chatoyancy can be found in uh, tiger's eye, pewterite, seraphonite, and charite, if you've ever seen charite or any of those. Pewterite, I love pewterite. Now, I have, and I'm hoping I can show it with some kind of light. Here I have a star sapphire. And of course, I can't get that star to show very, very well. It has six points. And if you turn it back and forth, you can see how it moves. It seems to move. It's an optical illusion, of course. It seems to move around. If you've ever seen a star sapphire up close, I, I'm just not getting it on any of my studio lights to show you that beautiful star. That is called an asterism chatoyancy. And asterism is just another word for star, but it has its own group, the star sapphire, um, in order for it to, to enable it to be called an asterism chatoyancy. Boy, I can't get this light where I want it. <laughs> okay, and, and now I want to talk about iridescence. Iridescence is very comparable in a natural gemstone. It, it's very comparable to your AB in your Czech class and your Swarovski crystal. If, if you're used to working with um, Swarovskis or Czech Check glass, you often come across the um, technique that they use to make those AB. Well, on a natural stone, there's no technique, it's all natural. It's the luster on a pearl. Very iridescent, very IR instead of AB. On a pearl specifically, the iridescence is called the orient. You can say um, this pearl has a very beautiful pink to blue orient on it. Um, other stones that have IR could be uh, the opal has IR. You can see an iridescence, a rain play of color, the rainbow on an opal. Um, rainbow pyrite, fire agate, and amylite. Now if you've seen ammonite, it's a snail that lived back in the dinosaur age, 30 billion years ago, I don't know how long ago. Um, but anyway, you see a snail and sometimes inside that snail will be some iridescent colors. On the back of that ammonite, there could be some IR. An amylite is the gemstone taken from those particularly iridescent ammonites. So an amylite can be very iridescent. Now, next we're going to talk about my favorite stone. I'm not going to call it a gem stone because when I when I think of a gemstone, I think of this pile here, the um, opal and emerald ruby, sapphires, you know, all of these crystals, amethyst. I think this is a gemstone. A lot of these to me are stones. They're just as beautiful sometimes, but uh, they don't have a gem quality to them. A lot of them don't. This is one of my own Labradorites. Uh, it's very beautiful. I love it. I did the weaving for it and then added the gold 
necklace to it. I, I wear this a lot. However, I have a lot of other favorite Labradorite gemstones. Look at this one. Look at the purple. If you can get every color, now I think I'm missing orange maybe in there. If you can get every color in there and it stays glowing, you don't have to turn it or it doesn't look mucky like some of these will look gray if you don't turn them right. See that? Um, it's called Spectrolite. And Spectrolite are the most sought after. And <laughs> the uh, most beautiful of Labradorites. Here's one that's just blue. It's beautiful. Here's... I could show you these all day. I have a collection of about 200 Labradorites. So I'm a little bit of a Labradorite, Labradorite geek. I'm a rock geek. What the heck? Look at that like sunset. Now see how it looks gray and murky? But then when you put it in the right light, it gives you this flash, this personality. So a Labradorite came from um, a Canadian island called Labrador, who was which was discovered by a gentleman named Labrador. And these Labradorites, this Labradorite, look at that. It's purple, and then it has that streak of blue through it. Um, these stones have labradorescence, like the moonstone, um, which has adularescence. The labradorite has labradorescence, and that's what you say when you're referring to these stones. The um, I've heard I've heard of this this color, this beautiful background glow called as adularescence. It is, the, the official term is labrador essence, and it should be easy to remember um, <laughs> that way, especially remembering who discovered the island and what the island's name is, and all of that is, you know, Labrador, like, like the dog. Simple to remember. These Labradorite have sheen. They have that glow, that background glow, but they also have, let me find a good one here. They also have Schiller. If you can see Between the color, there is some silver. Maybe if I show the back. Nope. No, it's not going to show. They have this glitter, a silver glitter in there. There, you can see it. There's the Schiller. So these stones have that Schiller and sheen the way a moonstone does. The next category is called pleochroism, and under pleochroism there are two sub um, categories, dichroism and trichroism. Dichroism is a term for two color, like a two color play, um, could be a kunzite. I have a coonside on the other side. And when I go like that on the other side, that's where my bench is, my choice bench. I have one over there, but I'm not gonna quick whip over there and get one it, because it does not show the two colors, the diacroic colors. And then there is trichroism, which obviously refers to gems that can display three colors. And that's um, an Andalusite can show three colors. So the gems in the pleochroic umbrella, the diachroic and triachroic under the pleochroic umbrella, 
our andalusite, iolite, kyanite, kunzite, sphene, and tanzite. Tanzanite, I'm sorry. Um, here's iolite. But I'm not getting any dichroic or trichroic colors out of this. Um, here is kyanite. It's a beautiful stone, isn't it? It's one of my favorite crystals. Uh, I have to quick change my battery for us. So, but you can see a little bit of those colors in there, almost as if it was a um, kind of a play acrylic right now because you're getting a little bit of both of the colors, the, the purplish and the greenish under my lights. So that's called the Alexandrite effect and it is a color change gemstone. It means it completely changes its personality. It changes its color um, depending on what type of light you're in. The final uh, phenomenon I'm going to phenomenon I'm going to cover right today is tenebrescence, and tenebrescence is kind of cool. There is a it, it only happens in a few minerals, and one of them is um, a rare variety of sodalite. It's known as hackmanite. When the miners found it in the mine, they discovered it. It was a beautiful um, purplish color, violet. And when they brought it out of the mine, probably to show how beautiful this stone looked, when they brought it out into the sunlight, the daylight, it turned to this grayish, um, greenish white color, almost like the murky color. If you were to look at this, it's almost like this murky color of, um, a labradorite when you're not tilting it in the light the right way. I mean, look how beautiful this, this labradorite is now. But if you tilt it like this, it's like this murky gray. You can see the shiller right there. It, it'd be just this grayish, greenish, white color. So they took it back into the dark and it turned this beautiful violet color again, back out into the light, greenish, white, gray color. It almost rendered this type of stone useless because it didn't show as well in the light as it did in the dark. And where are you going to wear a gem that isn't at its height, at its finest um, in any type of light? can only wear it in the dark and who's going to see it in the dark really, right? Um, you can show a light onto it in the dark, but to take it into the light, any type of light, fluorescent, um, incandescent, whatever, it just does not show at its best. Um, so that's called tenebrescence, it's hackmanite, uh, there are a few other rare um, gemstones that, that um, have this type of tenebrescence to them. Now, I know I haven't covered everything, and this wasn't meant to be um, 
a tell all. It was just a supposed it's, it was just supposed to be a quick gloss over some of the um, phenomena gemstones. It was just a little bit educational. I didn't get into each little um, stone to tell you everything I could about them. And I will be doing that um, in the future. But um, I guess in my, in my haste, I just don't want to say, okay, <laughs> quit the comments. I know all of this stuff. I just did not want to get into it in this quick video, okay? <laughs> Sorry, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to sound that way, but there are a lot of people who think they know a lot more than they really do. And think that I should tell everyone everything in this one, you know, what, 10, 15 minute video. And I'm not going to, this was just a gloss over some of, just some of the phenomenon gemstones that we know of and what the terminology we use when we talk about them. And so we can sound educated when we do talk about these types of stones. There will be more educational videos. I have already planned on pearl um, education. I already plan on opal education. Um, I'm only doing one a week and I will go into different groups of stones and I will go into stones in depth. So um, this was not to be a show all tell all. Just to gloss over some of these things, labidorescence, agilorescence, um, opalescence, ooh, all the essences we were going through. We we're going through chatoyancies, um, asterism chatoyancies. So it, this was just to gloss over. Uh, phenomenon gemstones because it's one of my favorite categories and I didn't hit everything about everything. It's just to give you a little bit of an education at little, you know, at different intervals and talk a little bit more in depth later on. So I hope you enjoyed this. If you have any questions, please ask. Um, I love to interact with with people, and I would love if you would uh, like, share, subscribe, and be notified when new videos come out. I have a huge giveaway for my 25 first subscribers. I'm very new to this, very new. Um, until recently, I just didn't have time to do something like this. And um, I probably still don't. It's 9.30 at night right now. Sometimes I'm doing this at 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know why. But I enjoy these things. I'm a nerd. If you're a nerd or if you just even want to know a little bit about gemstones, I'm here for you. Um, so with this giveaway, the more you share the more you can win because the person you share, if they win, then you're going to win something also. So if you share to 25 people, then you're definitely going to win one prize <laughs> at least. So as soon as we get to 25, um, we'll do that giveaway. And um, when we get to about 23, 24 subscribers, I'll show you how big and how much encompasses this giveaway. I um, subscribe to many boxes, many subscriber boxes, bead boxes, and I don't use um, check beads at all, check glass, is that what it's called? And that's what comes in a lot of this stuff. I, I'm not a bead weaver. And some of the 
beads that come in those boxes aren't enough to make anything significant anyway so um bead crate i am a collector and every month i get two boxes of the collector subscription of a bead crate so you're going to see doubles of a lot of stuff from bead crate in there in the uh, giveaway you're going to see uh, findings, you're going to see components, you're going to see uh, tools, you're going to see made jewelry, um, you're going to see lamp work glass, if you like that, you're going to see some Jesse James, I think, um, I am a subscriber of that one also, um, charms, so you're going to see a lot, and I'll show you everything when we get to about 23 24 subscribers i will bring it out and do a video i probably won't discuss each single item but you'll be able to see everything that that this giveaway has and <laughs> it's a lot of stuff already and i'll just add up as um we get more subscribers so I uh, thank you for taking your time to watch this. Um, I appreciate it very much when you subscribe and comment. That's important too, isn't it? Um, and I will get back to you when you comment. Um, please, please, it's the weekend. If you could find just one random person to give a genuine smile to, this weekend. It will do so much for that person and you'll feel good too. Um, and my last thought for today is take it easy beating. I really enjoyed this. Thank you. Good night.